Uh, today's presentation, the 2014 Sakai Design Lenses, follow up and update with the new Karuda 3 portfolio suite is being brought to us by Je Jenna Smith and Jacques Renaud. I hope I didn't slaughter your name, Jacques. Uh, both PhDs. Uh, Janice is currently retired from a uh, illustrious career in support of learning assessment showcasing career development. Her degree is in linguistics and we're delighted to have her. Jacques uh, is a team member at ePortfolium, which is a small co-op working in the area of ePortfolio implementation. And without mm -hmm. further ado, I'll let them take it over. Okay, well, we're here to talk about the 2014 Sakai design lenses and follow up with how the Karuda 3.0 portfolio suite represents those plans made long ago, some six years ago. Next slide, Jacques. So our overview, uh, we'll, we'll reintroduce the design lenses and something called the portfolio action verbs. We'll give you a look at our new release of 3.0 Karuda, and then we'll be presenting to you the pandemic portfolio, which is a, a good illustration of how the 3.0 Karuda suite represents what we planned long ago in the Sakai community for portfolios moving forward. Next slide, Jacques. So if you look at our slides, you'll be able to watch the video of our colleague Josh Barron, who was in, uh, the person who um, his, his, he was the person who introduced the design lenses to the planning of what was to become Sakai 3.0. So in 2014, the Sakai community went through a major transition and the Sakai CLE was heading for substantial change. But how to determine what aspects of change were most, most crucial? Josh Barron proposed that we focus on the learning capabilities required in an LMS by looking through what he called design lenses. This project brought together an impressive group of teaching and learning technology specialists. The goal was to identify principles for the design of what came to be Sakai 3.0 and later OAE 1.0. And we hope the current Sakai. So these, this diagram is, was used to explain how an LMS could facilitate key aspects of the learning process. The lenses were identified as learning and teaching management, social interaction, content creation and use, user autonomy, learning activities, assessment evaluation, and openness. Each lens was further explicated by a number of facets, and each facet was explained by a summary of intended goals. After a lot of intensive lobbying by those of us in the open source portfolio community, two facets were added to this uh, set of design lenses. The facets of portfolio design and portfolio processes, which are circled in red. In this presentation, we revisit the seminal work by calling on the, the new release of Karuda 3.0 portfolio suite for real examples that illustrate a number of the goals initially set by these lenses. Next slide. Here we see the portfolio action verbs. About the same time as the Sakai lenses project, design lenses project, the open source portfolio community was undergoing its own soul searching process. OSP, the open source portfolio, was going to be left behind in the previous Sakai version and the OSP community was fighting for its life. It was a tense time. OSP community members chose to focus their efforts to articulate on just what electronic portfolios were attempting to do by identifying what were called the portfolio action verbs. These portfolio action verbs crystallized the important processes that portfolios do to invite students, instructors, administrators, and institutions to actually uh, accomplish with portfolios. Next slide. These portfolio action verbs can actually be mapped onto a great many facets of the Sakai design lenses. So they go beyond the two uh, facets that we were granted. 
to cover a great many things that a C an LMS intends to do. So what you could think of Sakai as a uh, Karuta as a uh, learning environment that can accomplish a great deal more than only portfolios. So on this side the slide, the portfolio action verbs in red fulfill the original purposes of the facets onto which they have been mapped. Next slide. The Karuta open source portfolio was developed in the spirit of the open source portfolio tools in Sakai. From the beginning, the Karuta project has strived to capture the functionality identified by the portfolio action verbs. These strong points of the Karuta open source portfolio suite version 3.0, which will, will be released this summer, are illustrated by the action verbs in red. As we continue to develop Karuta and additional user needs are identified by adopting institutions, more of the functionality represented by the portfolio action verbs will likely emerge. Next slide. To illustrate the current power of Karuta, we have used to implement, implement what we call the pandemic portfolio. The pandemic portfolio reaches out to students who have been isolated at home and who have been wondering what have they learned over these several months and how, are that, how is that learning going to apply to their futures in a fast changing world. We'll give you a first look at the pandemic portfolio and tell you how you can access it yourselves to try it out. But first we want to reintroduce you to the basics of Karuta. So I mentioned that this was following the original uh, path uh, outlined by the open source portfolio tools in Sakai. We, our founding partners were HEC Montreal, Kyoto University, IUT de Grenoble, Three Canoes, and ePortfolio. We've finished our graduation from Aperio incub Incubation, and we now have an international governance board. Moving on. Karuta's main features are that it's flexible, it has LTI, it has a responsive design, it can be used in any language. It, uh, we offer support from a commercial partner, that's ePortfolio, and there is additional UI flexibility in 3.0. Someone's uh, microphone is on, that might be you, Laura. It is indeed. Uh, Karuta's flexibility can capture any ePortfolio process. So Karuta is a meeting place where you can organize different types of multimedia resources that can be used in a workflow for different types of users. Students may do one thing, evaluators another, mentors another, instructors another, and it all flows together in a grand workflow that accomplishes the purposes of the portfolio or the specific learning project that you're using Karuta for. That allows users to, it allows users to upload multimedia files, to use a dashboard to uh, track their progress. Rubrics can be added to Karuta. Evaluators can be peers or faculty or outside evaluators. Students can alert an evaluator that their content is ready. Karuta can generate PDFs, users can fill in forms in Karuta, and everyone can comment when allowed by the designer, and the content of Karuta can be exported. Karuta can be used to construct any type of ePortfolio. Right now, we tend to classify portfolios into learning portfolios, assessment portfolios, and showcase portfolios. But each portfolio may have some aspects of any of these types. We're going to show you a couple of portfolios to get a one particular portfolio to get started, and then we'll go into the pandemic ePortfolio. So this portfolio is one that we uh, inadvertently omitted from our presentation on the state of the project on uh, uh, earlier this week. It's from the New Brunswick Theological Seminary in New Jersey, USA. Uh, we want to thank Dr. Terry Smith at NBTS for her faithfulness in sticking with Karuta while we upgraded the software to meet their specific portfolio requirements. And also want to thank Martin Ramsey of the LAMP Project, who's also been a member of our Karuta Governing Board, 
for being the first to integrate Karuta into Sakai using LTI and making Karuta available to all LAMP members who want to implement Karuta. So this NVTS portfolio is actively in production right now. It's an assessment and accreditation portfolio, which is the most common reason for institutions to adopt e-portfolios in the US. Most seminary students at NVTS are part-time because they already have jobs. So the focus here is on associating multimedia evidence with the learning outcomes for their graduate programs. They document that the source of their evidence, they reflect on the meaning and relevance of the evidence, and then they self-evaluate on the rubric for the learning outcomes associated with that evidence. Then Terry Smith, the, the uh, administrator for the program, uh, associates anonymous evaluators with each student for each year, and those evaluators view the portfolios of their assigned students and use the rubrics within Karuta to evaluate the extent, extent to which the evidence, the documentation, and the reflection meet the specific requirements of the associated learning outcome. Uh, she can then run a report to satisfy two important accreditation requirements. First, her, accrediting, her accrediting, accreditation body wants to know which students have been evaluated at an average minimum score or three, of three or more out of four on the rubrics for each learning outcome. Imagine collecting that data without something like Karuta. And two, the accrediting body wants organized access to the evidence, the documentation, and the reflection that students have submitted for e any particular learning outcome. These results can then be easily submitted via the report in Karuta to the accreditation organization that requires their submission each year. So moving on to the uh, pandemic portfolio, which Shock will demo live in a, in a minute or so, um, we want to point out that the, the pandemic portfolio is the first to take advantage of our new front end code for Karuta 3.0, which will be released by the end of the summer. This slide features the enhanced look and feel capabilities of Karuta 3.0, which have, been, have brought it closer and closer to the appearance currently expected of any website. Here we see the new features for determining background color and for, or other aspects of background and for using blocks of images and text to make columns uh, in a more attractive format than before with Karuta. So let's go ahead now and take an in-depth look at how the portfolio action verbs of Karuta have been used to implement the pandemic e-portfolio. Jacques? Yes. Um, I, I will do a very quick presentation. I'm sorry about the background because they're doing some work in my place and uh, I hope it's not. Uh, so it's going to be really quick. Uh, a pandemic portfolio is an idea that uh, we, we read so much about students being, you know, alone, um, they, they moved from campus, they, they thought they, they were not learning much, although they were taking classes. So we said, no, that's not possible. I mean, students have done a lot. And this, uh, this is the idea from the pandemic portfolio. And we try to sort of in the first welcome page explain quickly that and I think we take care of the we use the power of the, the new features of Karuta to do that. So it says, what have you done recently? Probably a lot making sense of all that using uh, e-portfolio rubrics, especially the long life learning uh, rubrics and planning for your lifelong success. So the welcome page sort of continues and sort of try to sort of quickly present the, 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 part, the, the essential part of the, the portfolio and, and especially here the skills, collecting, self-regulating, self-reflecting, integrating and collaborating. Uh, well, what's going on there? I will go quickly. There is a read me first where you sort of explain everything. We try to, to make it like simple so people can sort of go on. There's a my information page that I will really go quickly because students can present education, work experience. That, that's the source of maybe the evidence that they, they will present. And this is the key part of this, uh, this, uh, this portfolio. So the, everything is uh, collapsible, so I, I can sort of get 
to see examples, but I, I, I would sort of explain them to you. Uh, this section is really crucial. This is where students should sort of add any kind of evidence that will sort of are related to their learning. It could be uh, a document they produce in class. It could be a, a, a description of a, a task they've done for a job. It could be community work. It could be a nice video they've done for whatever reason. Any occasion of learning should be sort of uh, documented here. This is the, 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 the goal of the evidence. And here I, for example, add a document and I can sort of uh, uh, upload the document and change things here. And with the new Karuta uh, 3.0, it's easy to sort of have a nice layout for all these things and we're working on it to sort of improve it. But uh, the way it is, I can see quickly all the, all the evidence that I've uh, submitted. And then uh, uh, during this process, I can start thinking about my long, long learn uh, uh, skills and for example self-regulating this is becoming aware of my behavior that is makes me a, a, a better learner uh, again I can uh, I can come here and here the idea is to go and get the evidence that are have already submitted in this other part and to sort of uh, uh, choose it here. So I'm going to, for example, choose my economic project, uh, add it here, and then uh, explain why uh, this is related to my, this is related to my, to my, uh, to my uh, self-regulating uh, skill. So this part is really important. It's the re explanation, reflecting part. And of course, I could sort of uh, add many uh, of these uh, to sort of support my sort of thinking about this, uh, this skill. And I could add lots, I could add ev uh, self-evaluation. Uh, here I, I added uh, uh, sort of an evaluation here where I can choose through a rubric uh, what are my my level that I think I'm right now? I can sort of explain that. And what's neat is that I could add another one because of course it's going to be dynamic and maybe next month I, I'd say, wow, I, I think I've improved myself and I, I think I'm much better on this uh, on this thing. So this is the this is the uh, the self evaluation that can sort of move on. And again, all these. The, the presentation and these features are coming through the new Karuta 3.0. So the UI is really making much simpler and uh, and and simplify the tax the task of the student. So again, they they bring evidence in this section and then they go on to discuss over there. And at the end, they probably can reflect on on the whole thing and sort of think about uh, what they're planning to do and what they've learned about themselves. So it's really empowers students and, and it goes beyond classes. It's not a replacement of campus life, but it sort of help in, in making sense of what they're doing, uh, which is quite interesting. And coming back to the welcome page, there is a, there is a, na a nice dashboard here uh, that sort of uh, present what's going on in terms of the current self-evaluation that you can eventually you could share there's a small issue that we haven't fixed right right but you can share this part to someone and, and maybe ask for feedback do you think this is what i'm doing and also it sort of lists uh the evidence i've deposited six artifacts and this is the the five last one that i've deposited so you've got information about that in this book. So again, this portfolio is a, is sort of, it sort of it encapsulate what Karuta 3.0 can do. And I think it's a sort of interesting answer to what is going on right now for in, uh, in student life. So I'm going to sort of come back to the presentation uh, and uh, just uh, show you where you can get an account about this uh, pandemic kit portfolio is very simple. You go to ePortfolio.com Karuta 3.0. You just sign in here and you will receive an email. Uh, check your trash because sometimes it goes there with the login and you just log in and you'll get 
right away to your e for uh, pandemic e portfolio. So I guess we sort of ready for, we're close to finishing time. I know it's uh, the conference on a tight schedule. I haven't had time to check the, the questions. Uh, maybe people, some people have questions, but uh, uh, the idea is you're really to get uh, to try it. And we will have a, a few more minutes for questions. In fact, we can take those now. I, I think since there's a break on the other side, we'll go ahead and take five, five minutes more. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, as I, um, as I see in the chat, Anne Marie uh, just loves this. She says it's such a great way of embracing the disruption we've experienced and valuing the learning that students have achieved. She says, one of my friends said that students are still learning in this time, uh, not just our learning outcomes. So um, it was a really nice presentation via Karuda for this one too. Oh, thank you. I'm trying to get to the chat myself. Did, did you cover how how this was discoverable or uh, disseminated uh, to to students during this pandemic? Uh, th that's a good, great question. Uh, actually, we we sort of um, because of the the format of the conference, we sort of changed a little bit our presentation. So th this is brand new. So we haven't this, we haven't it, it, it's not been used. It's it's fresh. Uh, it's it's available since like last week, actually. Fresh out of the oven, then. Yes, but maybe in time for the uh, September. And uh, I I will post on the chat and uh, on the forum. I wrote a sort of one page to sort of convince people in the universities that could be that could be something interesting. And it it should not be seen only as a sort of uh, individual thing that students will do. I think it empowers the whole university because, uh, for example, the carrier placement uh, offices, uh, some instructors, uh, extracurricular groups that are uh, could could sort of participate in this sort of uh, in this kind of project because it's it's not only for students; it's sort of more for the community sort of uh, to learn. So I agree. I agree. I. I... We are living in potentially a once in a life, maybe twice in a life, if you're right about fall, opportunity to, uh, well, not opportunity, but it's an experience that certainly needs to be captured and, um, and lessons learned from it for all of us. Yes. Also notice the meta thinking of, in this portfolio. We're using five learning outcomes that were developed by Jill Jensen and Paul Troyer in their change article um, having to do with what can portfolios teach individuals about their learning. So the learning outcomes have a rubric that's been, uh, I'd say, tested through a number of portfolio classroom experiences. And um, it's focusing students in on them, their own learning, their own integration and reflection on their learning um, and get, really answering the question, what have I been doing with myself during this time out? Interesting. Thank you. And thank you for adapting the presentation to the fact that we weren't able to get into the room until later. Oh, no problem. It's, it happens. So Laura, maybe you could help out and uh, once this will be available, maybe share the, the link to the presentation to people uh, because uh, yeah, a couple were probably um, tried to get in, but were not able to at the beginning of the conference of the presentation. I agree. I've uh, posted in the discussion for this presentation. So that, oh, okay. that's great. That's fine. Well, wonderful. We'll wrap up now. I will stop the recording. And uh, thank you again for adapting the session. Thank, thank you. you Laura.